What is up, everybody? Welcome back to First Fight View, episode eight today. Man, what a time to be alive. Am I right? We're going from, what is it, UFC to Bellator to Pride now. We're hitting, we're hitting every bit. We're trying to hit everywhere, and we're trying to hit all rule sets. Last week, we did the new rules. We've done the old rules before that, because that's the whole most likely area of rule sets that we would be covering. But now I figure, why not do something a little different? And it's going to be a little tricky, you know, because of the differences that Pride has in the global rule set and all that. But hey, we already have been scoring with that anyway, so should be fine, right? It should be fun. should be good fun. I mean, we have that 10-minute first round, I believe. <laughs> I believe that is what we'll be getting here. And today, we are looking at Minotaro Noguera, Big Nog versus Rico Rodriguez from Pride Total, Elim Total Elimination 2003. I had to ask on Twitter, and thank you everybody for you know giving suggestions of the most controversial decisions in Pride history because I missed, uh, you know, I haven't, I didn't, I wasn't a fan through the Pride times. You know, I've obviously seen some, but, you know, going back and looking, but not, I haven't watched too many decision fights, of course. Um, so yeah, I figured... Help me out, you know, help me out a little bit. And everybody said that this one was pretty much the absolute worst. And so, here, let me get to the screen share real quick before we get going. Cheap plug for the Twitter, of course. Um, the thing is in the way. Can you get out of the way, Bar? There we go. Um, so, let's look at the rules real quick because this was such a, hold on, this was such a controversial fight and decision and all that the results that uh you know matt hume judge the legendary trainer of demetrius johnson had to come out didn't have to but he came out and explained why the decision was right uh broke down the rules a little bit all that kind of thing and so having yet seen this but knowing the story of how it was kind of a pride versus ufc time because this was when chuck went over to the ufc on the same cut went chuck liddell went from the ufc to pride and he beat alistair over him on this very same card so it's like a little bit of pride ufc rico obviously former ufc champion this was before big nog made it to the ufc you know through pride so i'm assuming that people think it was kind of the ufc versus pride kind of bias thing and as we've seen in the time since then you know dana admitted that he was very much hoping Chuck would have went through and won that whole tournament and proved the UFC is better than everybody because why wouldn't he, right? He wants to have the best promotion, best fighters and all that. So if we look at here, this is what makes this a very interesting episode is looking at this specific breakdown of the global rule set, which I feel like has been tweaked a little bit since if we're going to compare it to Ryzen, which does, you know, judging not round by round, but fight overall. I feel like this is a little bit different, at least from the knowledge I have of what uh, the Ryzen rule set goes by. But um, still very similar, obviously, with the same, you know, same owners and establishment from the Pride days, because Ryzen is pretty much nowadays the current Pride. Um, obviously not the same. They're, they're still very different. But hey, if we're going to have any comparisons, that is obviously the one. So if we look at the, the criteria right here, um, you can see it for yourself. Ever to finish the fight by knockout or submission makes sense. Seems a little bit funny that that would be above damage. If we're going to critique this real quick, uh, standing combinations and ground control would be third after damage. Takedowns and defense. So defense is something that is not scored under you know, the unified rules, new or old. Aggressiveness. Okay, that's an old rule thing. And obviously, this is in order of most important, least important. And the funniest one, the absolute. Most ridiculous, one of the stupidest things I've ever seen, ever, is weight differences, being able to impact a fight. Obviously, it only comes into play mainly at uh, heavyweight and such. But just assume the fight is completely dead even, right? This is why this is so stupid. Assume it's completely dead even, 10-10 territory. Well, you don't have rounds scoring in the global rule set, but assume it is. The guy who's heavier would win by default. 
if Bob Sapp would have just came in there and ran away from, oh, I guess that would have lost aggressiveness. Imagine he had a staring contest with somebody. Bob Sapp comes in, or anybody who was just big or fat, they come in, nothing happens. They would win because they're bigger. How stupid does that sound? That's like the most, <laughs> the most toxic masculinity thing ever. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, we're going way too long with this intro, but had to talk about that a little bit just because this is very different and going to be very weird because we are going to be scoring this fight round by round because of the old and the new rules. That's the whole point of this show, you know? But then globally too, since we do that already, yeah. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to be fun. I'm going to see if this is the robbery that it's made out to be. Keeping in mind this, keeping in mind the other rule sets. Oh, it's going to be... We're doing work. We are working out the brain muscles here, everybody. So um, let's flip it on over now. Here we are to the scoring sheet. And obviously Global isn't going to be on here till the end because don't score by rounds. You don't do it. So let's go. Let's get it going. And I do believe that Rico Rodriguez is still fighting to this day. I believe he's fighting bare knuckle. The man has no idea when to say it's time to stop <laughs> and i will say also this pride presentation was pretty great there was boss Rutten and some other guy i don't know in the bar with all the ring girls behind them and they were doing shots talking about the fight it was pretty amazing honestly <laughs> very old school just don't give a shit kind of presentation and i'm a little upset that i didn't get to see it but you know, I love Ryzen. I'm sure I would have absolutely loved this. I mean, I loved what I just saw. So, yeah, this first opening round, 10 minutes, I believe. Uh, okay, we got the thing on the bottom, which I can't fucking screen. I, it cuts off the bottom. So, I guess I'm not going to know when the timings are happening. But a Superman punch right away from Rico Rodriguez doesn't really work. But then we get a nice inside trip from Big Nog. Oh, man, this is going to be fucking difficult to score with all three of these. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make very good logic of this. <laughs> but um, Big Nug in guard right now after that beautiful takedown trip. But uh, I was passing over to half guard. Landed some tiny ground pound. Nothing too significant happening in terms of strikes, yet the fight has started, so of course not. So who do we, I'm trying to listen to the commentator here. Oh, good sweep of sorts from Rico, but that was Nog trying to get the guillotine. So that is scoring, right? Under these global rules, he is, he was going for a submission. If you're looking for the knockout or the submission, I'm gonna have to remind myself and then consider the other rules. Let's see, if effort, effort to finish the Effort to finish the fight by K or submission. So yeah, that's scoring. This is going to be difficult. <laughs> and considering the other rules, which are kind of really in the back of my mind for this one. But so Rico's on top now. Um, half guard just got it into full. Nog, atta Nog attacking from bottom with some little punches. It's Big shot there from Rico. Man, 10 minute first rounds was such an interesting concept. I, I want to see, uh, I'm sure that shout out to uh, Jay Petri from SureDog. I wonder if he's got the stat for um, how many decisions there were in Pride history because of this. Um, oh, goes that was a very weak armbar attempt from Noguera. He didn't have it whatsoever. He threw it up. But Rico slipped out right away. So I, that wouldn't score. That doesn't count as points. Okay, he's going for it again. Better that time, but no. Uh -uh. So I wonder if these were counting. In that article that uh, I was just looking at, Hume breaks down the reasons that Noguera won. So maybe we can look at that afterward. It's going to make it a long episode, which I'm not sure about. But hey, let us see where it takes us. Let's see where the journey takes us, right? But uh, Rico's still on top here, getting the control, obviously. They are very equal in terms of strikes and damage so far. Um, 
referee stand up. They look oh read adjusting position, of course. They weren't really going out of the ring. That was interesting. I'm gonna be comparing this to Ryzen a lot just because of, you know, the similarities, obviously Japanese MMA promotions. But usually in Ryzen, you have to be like the refs don't move you until you're really going out of the ring. They were just right next to the ropes right there. So now dead center. And Rico going for kind of a one armed can opener, but it gave, gives it up. Big now got good wrist control there on Rico's right arm. Um, you know, there's throwing little punches here and there. Nog throws up another triangle splash arm bar of sorts, but just nothing. Rico is really onto it, not, not too close. Okay, that was a good shot there from Rico. <clears throat> This is very, uh, yeah, very interesting so far. Pretty much just comes down to the control and at the moment, because those submission attempts were really not even attempts. I would say I would not count those. So let's think of the old rules a little bit here. Um, yeah, Rico is winning for his his control. Damage is equal. New rules, new unified rules. God. So many things going on in my head. Um, it's it's pretty much this is pretty much a stalemate. It's it's pretty much dead even. Um, Rico trying to make some space, land some shots. Uh, another another. Triangle of sorts attempt. Ooh, there's some knees on the ground from Rico. Okay, so that's some good damage. It wasn't super clean or impactful, but he landed it. He's controlling very well right now in this first round. I'm not sure how much time has gone by because I can't see the goddamn <clears throat> timer. But um, he is taking it globally at the moment old rules as well i think he passes the damage um surpasses on damage with the new rules with that knee honestly oh and there's a good punch ground to pound shot so no real submission attempts in this round i would say they're like teases you know no no serious danger for Rodriguez. Like, that's some bullshit if that's you're counting those as, <laughs> some, as scoring. If you are watching along and seeing this, please comment or have seen this and remember all that. You now comment, those are those are not should not score whatsoever. Those I wouldn't call those attempts. You have to have <clears throat> you know some threat for like at least a full second. And it wasn't even that. So still throwing on some little uh, in tight shots here. Punches on the ground. Rico's got total top control. Ooh, some some hard body shots here. Ooh, okay, there's some big ones there from Rico taking over in the damage department. It's good for new rules, old rules. He's walking away with it on the old rules. Um... And globally as well. Everything right now is in his favor. I, I wonder too, um, going back to episode 7, where McDonald and John Fitch, if you saw that one, uh, where I was in attendance for that one, kind of cheated with that episode, you know, as we said. But the interesting thing about the perspectives and, you know, me being there and the difference with watching it on TV to being there, being able to hear the shots a lot better. I wonder if, uh, you know, people feel that way about any Japan fights, really, because, you know, the crowd's always so silent. And, you know, these do sound more impactful than your typical ground and pound in a big UFC fight. Good body shots there from Rico. Um, even in Ryzen, it's really just anywhere in Japan. Any, any U MMA fights that are in Japan. Um, and we're getting another adjustment as they got a little close to the ropes. But so far, yep, 
I am seeing this be all Rico, the UFC guy, which is interesting. I mean, I don't want to get into that mess, but we know Pride had some interesting things about it. Not insinuating. You probably know what I'm hinting at. But yeah, that's a different topic for another day. Rico landing some more shots from top in the guard. Butterfly here for Nog as he's trying to push off the hips. And Rico standing it up uh, for now. Yep. I'm letting him up. I'm going to see some more stand up. Yeah, this is this is where it, oh a flying knee attempt from Nog, which is no no good. Okay, he landed a good shot there. Mm, nothing too clean. Nog throws a looping left. Okay, it's a good shot there from Nog, right hand. I wish I could see how much time was left. Oh, Rico fakes a takedown and then goes up high. Lands a right hand. Good leg kick there. Sort of checked. Half check. But uh, it was solid. That <laughs> little one firing back there is now going for kind of the H-bomb combo. Inside leg kick with the follow-up with the right hand. <clears throat> but uh, pretty even on the stand-up here. You can't forget whatsoever about that time all before this. Aggressiveness, though, if we're going to talk about that. I mean, it's lower on the totem pole, too, right? So, head kick attempt there from Rico. Flying knee attempt. Good knee to the body as they're in the clinch now. Rico, another one. And he takes him down again. Scoring. Scoring. And Boss just says he's winning this round for sure now. Yes, he already was, but... Yeah, that puts it over. I have a feeling that this one is... <laughs> I just have a feeling that this one is a robbery. Um, that was another attempt, attempt at a triangle. These just are not... Not even... Attempts. And there it is. End of round one. Which definitely felt longer than five. But... Yeah. Um, I think that Rico's, yeah, blue gloves. So, 9 10 Rodriguez. And 9 10 Rodriguez. His control time pretty much sealed. He did, he did better damage too with certain shots. So, the guillotine. I guess I forgot about the guillotine. That's That scores. The guillotine from Nog. But that even wasn't that much of a threat. It was definitely. That was the only real submission attempt, threat, whatever you want to call it, that Nog had. So, yeah. Just one. Just one in that round, I would say. Um, so the big round, out of the way now. Doesn't really matter scoring wise that it's a big round just you know more time for things to happen I suppose you could say but yeah I it wasn't like a total blowout or anything like you know Rico didn't completely like dominate him but he clearly won it's hard it's hard to think that he he didn't get that or that he shouldn't have got that. Okay. We're not, this fight, obviously they're not scoring by the round, but to think that he's not up at the moment. Let's put it that way, right? Because we're judging as a whole. This is what we've seen so far. This is difficult. Difficult scoring process in the brain. <laughs> but here we are. So, round two of three. Five minute, back to five minute rounds here. Jab from Nogueira does not land to start. 
Need a little right straight gets through for Rico. Nog firing with a combo. Leg kick is checked a bit there from Nog once again. So Rodriguez throwing the leg kick. Yeah, and Big Nog leading the charge a bit when it comes to aggressiveness on the feet, but he's not really doing anything. Left hook, slow left hook there from Rico. Looks like it got blocked. Oh, good knee. He's landing those knees in the clinch very nicely is Rodriguez. Um, and now Big Nog's got him up against the ropes. It's going to say the cage, but this is not a cage. Oh, looking for the takedown. Nope. So defense, right? We get, we score defense globally. That's points for Rodriguez. Right? So what are you talking about, Hume? Huh? What is going... Oh, good leg kick there from Nog. Catches him uh, countering a punch there. <clears throat> so very interesting. Another good leg kick there from Nog. He's coming at him a bit there, throwing some hands, but... Not doing too much. And takedown attempt from Rodriguez, and he gets it. That was a big one. That was a good one. So let's see how long it takes for the referee to move him. <laughs> All right. So we are, we got Rodriguez in the guard. Nog throwing some tiny, tiny little an annoying punches from bottom. And here's the move. Knew it. Knew it was coming. Knew it was coming. Referees a lot more lenient, those Japanese referees these days. Let things fall out of the ring. So, you know, was it Brandon Halsey against Yuri? And uh, uh, it was Pitbull, too. Um uh Patricky, right? At Ryzen 20. Fell out of the ring in one of his fights. I think it was the Tofik one. It's a phenomenal fight as well. Card of the year last year. And a great sweep there from Nog. Gets uh gets Rico on bottom. Oh, and he's gonna transition over again. Wow, that was fun. <laughs> Rolling around. And that was a very weak Kimura attempt. I would not score for that either. But um, obviously, being able to get that sweep was good for Noguera, but he's back on bottom again because he got swept himself. Ooh, get some knees right there. Okay, okay, we're getting uh, Oma Plata. There's, this is a submission attempt here. Oma Plata from uh, Big Nog. This is threatening for sure. So this is something, most uh, significant thing so far to happen in this round. So Big Nog is definitely doing, getting some points here. And out, though. Wasn't super. He wasn't super in danger, but that was, uh, that was good. Definitely worth something right there. And Rodriguez in the guard again. Looks like we're getting another move. A little bit annoying how often <laughs> they're getting moved here. Um, you know, I, I've, this is the most I've seen a referee move anybody in a in a ring fight. You know, maybe I just haven't watched enough fights in rings, but I've seen a good amount to this point. I don't know. So Nog here trying to do you know a little work. Pretty much a replay of the beginning of that first round is happening right now. You know, and armbar is getting tossed up by Nog, but that is nothing. Okay, you know what? I'm pretty sure that because I read that, you know, Hume's comments and everything, I'm pretty sure he's counting that on the scorecards, which is ridiculous. And a knee on the ground from Rodriguez as they're scrambling a bit, but I don't think it landed very well. But about that submission attempt, attempt. There's only been two real submissions 
attempted in this fight so far was that guillotine in round one and then that um, omoplata. And Rodriguez is doing his thing again. It's like the control time and and that's it. That's the round. That's rounds over. Did not do enough. That was a lot closer because of that. That was very – that was a big moment. That was probably the biggest moment of the round. Old rules, absolutely. Rodriguez. New rules, pretty close. But you got to think that takedown to the control time. Yeah, yes. So, scoring this as a whole, too, even, you got to think about all this time. Only, th that was the most, well, he had the lake kicks, too. Hmm. It's a very good lake kick standing up, did Noguera. You know what? Okay, as a, as a whole right now, this fight, yeah, is Rodriguez, but I... I think I'll give Nog that one. I'll give him it on the new rules, which, you know, because they're very close, very interesting. You know, the takedown, it was a good takedown, but then you got to consider what happened after. The scramble is, scrambles, the, um, the uh, sweeps. That was a fun round. That was a fun round, but, um, yeah, <laughs> on the global scorecard, ah, uh, which is what matters in this one. Unique episode. First pride fight of the series. You combine the time with that first round and uh, that's just don't see I still think that Nog has, you know, has to do something pretty significant in this third round. It's gonna, it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be interesting. Are they mentioning the weight? It's not that close, guys. And I... It's just the stupidest thing ever. One of the stupidest things I've ever heard. I've heard a couple, couple stupid things in my day. I've heard uh, I was a kid in my high school who thought that a bow and arrow was better home defense than a shotgun, and he was legitimately serious about it. Flying knee out the gate from Rodriguez. These guys like to throw those, but they do not land very well, and he ate some punches on the way out from Nog. And so if we think about that aggressiveness too, yeah, I'm fine with giving Nog round two. Um but overall, and another big takedown from Rodriguez. Single just rushes him against the ropes there. And, oh, now we have a Kimura, though, coming from Nog. <clears throat> Got the lock on it. Not much danger yet, but this is an on its way to an attempt. Okay, he's trying to yank, trying to yank, trying to yank. Scoring by going for it. Scoring by going for it. Takedown has been kind of wiped away on the global scorecards and the new rules. Okay, he's got it out. He's working for it. He's working for it. This is big time. And loses it, though. Still, that was a good moment. Definitely a very good moment. So you, you got to think about this too. Neither guy has really been close to finishing the fight, but who's been closer? Big Nog, technically, right? Pretty easy to say that, which makes it interesting. Um, in terms of damage, it's been pretty equal. Their ground and pound strikes is a slight edge to... Rico for, you know, knees and some of those body shots were very nice. A lot of the same, noticed. In your face, reminds you I'm here, shots. Ooh, that was a good one, though. Good left. And Rico continues to control from the guard. One of the big stories of this fight. 
Um, hmm, but, you know, pretty equal, though, because Nog is firing back right now, and they are in the guard, which is the most equal of positions to be in on the ground. And, yeah, that good Kimura wasn't super dangerous, but it was definitely – it was okay, it was threatening enough to where Rico had to move, and that tells you a lot. So, at the moment, Big Nog on this round. That feels fine. And then overall, it's still tough. That's still tough at the moment. At the moment, Rico's still controlling from top. Nog got risk – he's got double risk control – as Rico's sliding up on his knees as he's defending. Oh, and that was a triangle attempt, but it wasn't. That wasn't that close. I mean, he had he had it more so than the earlier ones. Another armbar thrown up, but one of those ones that I would not count. The triangle was – ooh, there's some good short shots there from Rico, though. Little uppercuts while on the ground. That's what that's what I could compare them to. They were kind of sneaking in that way. Um, yeah, that triangle was not uh, – you can't really compare that to the other ones, right? If you think about how close the Kimura was to that triangle, it's not even a debate. Even that guillotine from earlier. And you think about overall. Hmm. I don't know. It's tricky. It feels a lot closer actually now. I uh, I don't think this is a robbery as the time is winding down here. But obviously, I don't know. The, the control time is so heavily in his favor. It's it's really close to go. And you see Hume right there actually. Um, you know. Rodriguez still in guard. When I'm not talking about the action specifically, it's because it's just kind of the same thing happening. Um, you know, Rodriguez and Nog trading those short shots inside. Uh, Nog getting bent over. Good knee to the back of the head there from Rodriguez. Okay, and the fight is over. Huh. Hmm. Interesting that the commentators are very convinced about it, too. Um, shit. Um, Rodriguez on the old rules, I think that's still totally, yeah. New rules. And got those good shots. That triangle uh, wasn't close enough, I don't think. Uh, uh, I'm, uh, slight edge. Slight edge to Rodriguez on, on the uh, third round. So yeah, this was a <laughs> commentator. This is unanimous. <laughs> they are baffled. Uh, no, 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 no. What am I doing? So, yeah. Mm. It just wasn't enough. I, when you look at everything, it was close, right? Standing combinations and ground, con ground control. This is number three. Damage, slight edge to... Slight edge to uh, Rodriguez. I mean, edge to it. I'm not going to say slight. He had the edge there in damage, I think. Effort to finish the fight by knockout or submission. So, yeah, that, that one. Let's look at it this way. 
One, I think we give that to uh, Noguera. Two, we give to Rodriguez. Combinations, ground control, oh, obviously. Obviously, Rodriguez. Takedown and defense, Rodriguez. Aggressiveness. I mean, if we're counting aggressiveness as only on the feet and pressure, you know, ring control, then we'll give that one to Noguera too. And then weight differences, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that uh, Rodriguez is heavier. So that gives him one, two, three, four of the six criterias. And number three was a massive one. And four. And then you got to think about he defended the takedowns. No, he didn't. He defended submissions as well. Yes, it's lower on the pool here, but in comparison, right? It's tricky. It's a little tricky. It was close. I, uh, I don't feel super comfortable saying robbery with that, even though all three of those scorecards belong to uh, the former UFC champ. I'm going to say not a robbery, but it was uh, clear. Clear who won, but not a robbery. I, I'm pretty sure. I don't know if I've said that yet on this show, but I've talked about this in the past. And I say it a lot. We can have clear winners. Um, clear winners in close fights. That's something that I uh, I firmly believe. You know, like just edge it out. You feel comfortable at the edge out, but it was still close, you know? Uh, close fights are not robberies as well. I will say, sing that. Till the cows come home. So, you know what? Since we don't have... MMA decisions to look at for pride fights and such. I think we will look at Matt Hume's reasoning here, especially afterwards. Yeah, this is this is great. This is an actual guy who judged it. So let's look at, I'm pretty sure he was going to say the exact same shit that I did, ex except more value given to Noguera. So he believes that the decision was right. Obviously, I'm assuming he was one of the judges for this fight. So Noguera wins by a large margin due to his multiple submission attempts and active attack. Based on this, there's no reason to consider any further criteria is there in descending order. However, education, however, we will continue. So that to me says that there is no reason to consider any further criteria. So that means Noguera wins simply for that guillotine. The Kimura triangle wasn't enough. Guillotine and the Kimura. I, I might be forgetting one, so there's three of them. Hmm. If that's the case, if that's right, if that's how it's supposed to be, then okay. I will agree. I will agree that he should have won, technically, right? By the rules. We're going by the rules. But, um... That's that just doesn't doesn't seem right, you know. And then damage, no damage from striking by either party. Possible damage from Deep Kimura in round three by Noguera. No, 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 no. How, dude? Come on. There wasn't great damage from either side, but there was more damage from Rico. I feel pretty comfortable saying that, having literally just watched it. Not to get snarky. Standing cannot standing combinations ground control. Neither fighter showed superiority in standing skill. Yeah, pretty equal. Noguera dominated ground control as he constantly went for submission and gave away neutral position for inferior position. Yet he was able to move back to neutral position with relative ease each time. Noguera also had a forced reversal. Rodriguez had a reversal while Noguera was passing guard. Forced reversals, reversals are more difficult to achieve and more valuable for guard control. Rodriguez was warned many times throughout the match to improve position but chose to stay in neutral guard without damaging strikes or attempts to pass to dominate, dominant position. I did not see warnings. They were moved. Literally didn't see any warnings whatsoever. Um, unless those are the same thing. And very interesting point here about the control. I just feel like you know, he knows better than I do. Let's get that out of the way. If Noguera was controlling so well from his back, 
for that long, wouldn't he have changed the position? But, uh, I guess it's it's pretty much. I do agree with yes, he was going for it to give away the neutral position for an inferior position, but he never got out of that necessarily, and the attempts were not. I don't know. That's that's actually he makes that a little bit more interesting to think about, but in terms of who was controlling from top more, obviously we know who that was. Takedown and defense. Nog Nogueira scored one clean takedown and defended two times. Didn't see any defenses. Rico scored three takedowns, and he also defended. I saw a defense from him. Um, so, yeah, I disagree with that one completely. Aggressiveness, Noguera wins by a large margin due to his many attempts at submissions and his... Okay, so, yes, not just control. I guess we should agree with that. So we'll switch that one to Noguera, actually. The referee warned Noguera, uh, Rico many times in this area, but did not award... I didn't see the warning still. And then, yeah, the weight, blah, 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 blah. Okay, aggressiveness. I wouldn't say a large margin because in terms of strikes and ground and pound and all that, sure, nothing was super crazy, but Rico was attacking pretty consistently. And the many submission attempts, there were about three, okay? I guess three is more than one because Rico never went for one, but I don't know. I don't know. Um, and it's a little bit hard for me <laughs> when I have these three rule sets in mind. But hey, I guess, you know, technically, if we're going to go by this, uh, we're going to go by, since Noguera was the, you know, only one to do submission attempts, he automatically wins for that. Then so be it. But, um... Yeah, I mean, hey, I'll agree. If that's the case, then I'll agree with it, you know. But as I was watching and interpreting myself, um, I don't know. I don't know. Very tricky one. This is a very odd episode, right? I'm dragging on a bit because there's just so much run through my mind. But uh, there you have it, you guys. That was Big Nog versus Rico Rodriguez. Pride Total eliminate, total elimination. Two thousand three. Very interesting fight. Fun second round. Three and one were all right. <laughs> it was an okay fight overall, but um, yeah, that is that, you guys. So thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed another episode of First Fight View. What did you think about that fight? Please let me know in the comments below. What other fights should I look at? I got a, a bunch here recommended on twitter when i asked if you pitched in and are watching thank you so much for submitting you know we got silva versus ricardo rona from mike j batista shout out to him big no rodriguez yes uh, big knock barnett maybe hendo bustamante too i've heard multiple hendo ones guy mesger all of his decision decisions apparently were bad so we'll get back into pride in the future but probably not for the next episode unless you really want to see one um anyway recently spoke with marina Ma marina Rodri rodriguez right because brazilian um who's supposed to fight claudia gadea at this past ufc event but didn't happen because she you know stuck in brazil because of the coronavirus good good uh good chat her with her there you know catching up with her check that out you guys on my mma news you can find it on my twitter here obviously um and yes it is in my collection of all feature stories so yeah that's that let's wrap it up thanks so much for tuning in you guys and i will see you next time take care everybody